Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And on the bench today we have yet another Ham International Concord 3 that's got maybe some issues, but you know, we're getting used to these things now and the problems that these have. But before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook group, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net, where all my boards are. Let's get started and see whether we can bring this old girl back to life. So this Concord 3 is in not too bad condition to be honest, it's um, it's quite nice on the outside. But you know, appearances can be deceiving and we all know what problems these radios have. So let's get the lid off and let's have a look and see what we can see. So popping the lid off, everything looks okay, but then again, like I say, appearances can be deceiving with these things. And let's have a look at the printed circuit side. And on quick inspection, everything looks okay. But we start to delve a little bit deeper and we're going to start finding horror stories. So let's have a look at the capacitor in the corner like we normally do and yes that looks like it's been leaking its juices it doesn't look too bad but it's definitely leaked its juices so we'll change that and repair that so on the initial power up it's not really doing a lot so we've definitely got a bad trace we can fix that so looking at the solder joint where the capacitor for the AVR is and the solder has actually started to crumble away. Must be some chemical reaction with the, the stuff that's in the capacitor and the solder. So I'll put some flux on it and try to desolder it with my desolder gun and it wasn't having it, it just was not melting at all it was just not going no matter how much I tried this has definitely got to be the most interesting one I've seen like this so I just started to scrape away and you can see all the solder it's just turning to dust and the um the leg of the capacitors just flapping about in the breeze so we'll clean it off with a little bit of IPA and we can see that the juices from the capacitor has eaten the solder away quite badly so let's take the capacitor out and have a look and yes it's definitely been leaking that's definitely not going to help matters. And yeah, I reckon the trace has gone. So we'll just put a little bit of white vinegar on that just to stop it going any further. But we will put a wire link across the back to ensure no further problems or any future problems that might occur should the trace ever decide to let go fully. So I'm just going to try and scrape away some of this, what's left of the solder. And as you can see, it's just turning to dust, which is um, very unusual. But it must be some, like I say, some chemical reaction with the electrolyte inside the capacitor and the actual solder itself. So we're just going to scrape away until we can get down to somewhere where there's some decent metal to actually solder to. So I'll just gently scraping away, wiping away with a cotton bud, we finally get down to some metal that looks like we might be able to actually put some fresh solder on it. 
And yeah, it does look like it started to eat away at the copper as well. Which wouldn't surprise. So yeah, I think we can actually get some fresh solder onto that. So we'll pop some flux on it. And we'll see whether we can actually get some solder to stick to it. And finally, we get some solder that actually sticks to it. So we can actually replace the capacitor now. There, that should do nicely. Just making sure the solder's well and truly stuck to the exposed metal. Now what we'll do is we'll clean it off with the desoldering gun. And have a look at the finished area. And yeah, that'll do nicely. Nicely tinned up now. So a nice new capacitor. That's that problem solved. Yeah, very nice. That shouldn't be causing us any trouble again. But what will cause us trouble is this. I didn't notice this at the start, but looking closely, this is quite rotten. So I took all the wires away that connect up to the cell call and we're just having a look at the area and the same thing's happened again. All the solder's gone brittle and this has actually started to devour the copper traces as well. As you can see, bits of it are just flaking off. So yeah, I'm going to have to do some work to get this happy again. So cleaning with IPA does absolutely nothing. Underneath all that fur is actually another solder connection to a capacitor. So I think the only way we can tackle this is let's get all these capacitors out from around the audio stage. So I've got a nice picture that I made of every point that can be desoldered. Instead of looking at one side of the board and looking at the other, I can just go along and just blanket unsolder all the parts. So we will be replacing all the capacitors in the audio stage. There's only two or three which really cause trouble, but you know, for good measure. And people like recapping things. We're going to recap all this area. And make it good again. So just going along with the desolder gun. Taking out as much as what I can. Bit of a um, tedious task, but it's got to be done. If we want to see the true extent of the damage in this area because there are traces that run on the top of the board as well and we know from previous experience that these rot as well and these traces like to run in between the legs of capacitors so that's one of our first troublesome connections where the solder has just turned to dust Oh, great. So let's pull a few capacitors out. And these are the troublesome 100 mic capacitors. And that one's absolutely crusty. Yeah, that's rotten. That's bad. That's bad. Let's pull the other one. And sure enough, exactly the same. Absolutely rotten. Yeah. That's been rotting for quite a while. 
So now we've just got to try and scrape up the area, get rid of all the corroded material, get down to some decent metal. Now on that first 100 mic that we removed, it's actually gone underneath the solder mask and eaten away the copper and it's actually removed this whole pad as well so there's not really much left of that but it's okay we can solder next door to it it's fine but this bottom one the capacitors leaked and gone underneath the solder mask and et away the copper and the more I scrape the more bits fall off in a vain attempt at trying to get down to some metal that can actually be soldered to there isn't a lot left as you can see all that's been rotted away been eaten away by the capacitor it's okay we can fix it nothing a wire link and a bit of time won't you know won't solve should we say so we've put the necessary components back in again and we've put a nice wire link across connecting up all the components like they should be and we're just for good measure we're going to put some uv curable solder mask over it just to make it look pretty and give it a little bit of protection and there's our finished work that'll do just nicely looks a lot better than it was so will the radio work this is the question so we don't really need to connect all the cell call wires back up again but we have done anyway and we switch the radio on and sure enough we're now transmitting which is absolutely fantastic and we're receiving again so this radio is on the mend we have sound we have sideband it's not been aligned yet so things are just going to be a little bit off so we'll just do some alignment after we've done some performance modifications so final RF bias is completely wayward so we'll set that to 0.7 of a volt that will do just nicely should give a good stable um, transmission no clipping on it or anything now we're on the test point for the 692 and the 695 which is always a bit twitchy on these radios so we'll give those an align and there's our 695 Gently bring it into spec, and there we go, 695. It's as close as, but it's as good as. That'll do nicely. And the 692 is an absolute mile out. So we'll put that correct. So it's within spec. So let's do the the crystals so 26505 and these crystal trimmers are really really twitchy you just breathe on them and they change and don't forget there's a reverse channels on these as well which makes it a little bit harder to understand but as long as you get it on the five everything will be quite happy there we go so 955 and then we move up to channel one midband 
26965, 27415. We'll bring that into spec. Just like so. High band should be 865. There it is. Okay, fantastic. Radio should be quite happy now. Last thing we just need to do is LSB offset. So lining it up against a known radio, a known good radio. Just do it by ear. I'll do nicely. And that should be our Concorde done. And there we have it. Another How International Concorde 3 brought back from the dead, should we say. And all its lovely rotten capacitors, which seems to be plaguing these radios. It won't surprise me why so many of them have been lost over time due to these being rotted away. But anyway, we can fix it. No problem with that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. Join Facebook group, join Patreon, buy me a coffee. Have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.